hello friends uh, welcome back so the next topic we have is our nested try statements in the last class uh, in the last video we covered your multiple catch clauses what are these multiple catch clauses and uh, how this could be uh, handled all these things we have seen in the previous video today that is in this video we'll try to understand what are your try statements we already know what are your try statements but one new thing we'll be studying here is that try statements can also be nested so the try statement can also be nested see here. okay now that is nothing but a try can be inside a block of another try okay so we can go on putting one one try another another uh, inside another try and so on so each time a try statement is entered the context of that exception is pushed on the stack so you enter a try statement here say for example this is my try, try statement then you have a stack pointer you have a stack you have a stack pointer and all those things then if there is any exception here then that exception is stored it is pushed what is the meaning of push it is stored in that stack okay if there is an inner try statement and that does not have a catch handler for a particular exception then the stack is unwound unwound means what now it is taken back and the next try statements catch handlers are inspected for a match okay so and this will continue until one of the catch statement succeeds so that means what now it will come here it will check for the exception if there is an exception if there the, it has a exception it has a catch then that will be stored inside the stack okay then what will happen now next thing it will check for the next catch statement next catch statements if there it is available then it will continue with that if it's not available then it will go ahead and try for the next thing so this goes on until all your try statements are executed okay now if there is no match at all say there is no match at all that is no catch statement matches then the java runtime system is there remember friends it's like uh, the topmost the, the the topper of your class so what who is the topper of your class java runtime system if none of your exceptions none of your catches are able to catch the exception or exceptions are nothing but errors then who will catch that er error the java runtime system will try to catch that error okay so let us treat, see now what we are what i explained now let us try to understand this so if an inner try statement does not have a catch handler for a particular exception that means what now you have a try statement inside that try statement you have another try statement say that another try statement which i am speaking that is try statement number two is not having any catch there is no catch handler for a particular exception then the stack is unwound unwound means what now it is opened up it is opened up and the next try statements catch handlers are ins inspected so that means what now the first first ca catch statement is not matching so therefore it will move to the next catch statement if that also doesn't match it will move to the third catch statement if that also doesn't match then you have a super thing that is nothing but your topper then the topper will come into picture which is java runtime system and that will handle the exception that will go ahead and handle the exception okay so to understand this we will see an example wherein we have a nested try statements so this is an example of wherein you will be having a nested try statement okay so let us try to understand this uh, example now so the name of the class is nest try you have a class called as nest try then inside that you have a main function so this is our main function then you have a try statement friends you have a try statement and let us see now what is there inside this try statement okay now we are again taking here int a is equal to arcs dot length that is arguments dot length and this you have already seen somewhere if you remember yeah you have seen it somewhere yes see here my cursor is pointing right there okay and you know it's it's scenario what would happen here that it will take a value zero if it is not given with the help of the command line okay so see here now that has the same thing has been rewritten here reproduced here 
So if no command line arguments are present, then the following statement will generate a divide by zero exception. So what it means means when the divide by zero exception will occur, when your a value will be equal to zero. Why? Because we are dividing 42 by a and the value of a is what now? Zero. So that means what now? We are dividing 42 by zero. So 42 by zero means what now? It is unwanted. It is unexpected. Okay. So therefore, we will print the value of a if this works. But what would happen here? There is an exception. There is an exception occurring. Okay. For now, just remember this thing. Next, we will go ahead with the program now. So this was the first try statement. What we are studying? We are studying nested try statement. So when we are studying nested try statement, what is the expectation now? This try statement should consist of another try statement. So this is your nested try block. Okay. Now, let us see now what would happen. If command line argument is used, see here friends, this was the case if no command line arguments are present. This is the case if the command line arguments are used. Okay. Then a divide by zero exception will be generated. See here friends. So uh, here what did we do? If there is no command line argument, automatically this a value will be zero. Okay. We have also studied in the previous program that if we use command line arguments, then we can pass the value to a. You can see here a has been passed the value of one. Okay. So if we pass the value of a, then also we are trying to generate an error. How it could be done? Let us see now. If a is equal to equal to one, then a divided by a minus a. See here. What did they do now? One a is equal to one here, right? One divided by one minus one. So zero. So one divided by zero means what now, friends? Again, it is a division by zero. So again, we are creating an error. Okay. So if two command line arguments are rolled, there could be a possibility that you could use two command line arguments. So in that case, see here. Again, we are, our our aim is to what now? we have to generate the errors so that we could see how our try and catch will work. Okay. So if there are two command line arguments, if a is equal to equal to two, then we are generating out of bound exception similar to your previous program. How did we do here? The same way we are generated out of bound exception here. The same thing we are doing here. That is we are generating an out of bound exception. Okay. Next let us. So these tries are over now. We have two tries, right? One try if there is no command line argument. The second try if we have a command line argument. And inside that itself, inside the second try itself, we have checked for two things. That is, if our argument is only one argument, then we should give this error. If there are two arguments, then we should give out of bound exception error. Okay. Now let us see what are the various catch statements we have. So the first catch statement we have is you can see here it tries to catch the out of bound exception and it will print that saying that the array is out of bound. Okay. Next, you have another catch statement which is trying to print what now? It is trying to print the divide by zero error. Okay. So I hope the program is clear, right? Next thing is what now? We will shall see what will happen when the program is executed. So let us take the first condition that there are no command line arguments. There are no command line arguments. Then which part of the code is ex uh, executed? This part. That is the first try statement. That means a divide by zero exception is generated, right? By which try statement? This try statement. This is called the outer try block. This is called the outer try block because this is the first one outside. Inside this, we have another one, which is called as inner try block, which is second one. Okay. Now, execution of the program with one command line argument generates a divide by zero exception. Right. So, this was the case. We executed with one zero, uh, sorry, uh, with uh, no command line argument. This got executed. Now, we want to execute with the one command line argument. Okay. Then what will happen now? It will be executed with the second exception it will sorry it will be passed to the uh, this inner try point try statement right so here what would happen now that if you execute with uh, two conditions are there the first condition is let us assume we have executed with one try statement sorry one uh, command line argument then this will execute right 
Now let us assume you have uh, two command line arguments, then an array boundary is there, yeah, then an array boundary exception is generated. From where it is generated now friends? From the inner thread law. Okay, now I hope it's very clear. Okay, now so we have we would get these are the sample runs. When you run with no command line argument, this is the error. When you run with one command line argument, this is the error. When you run with two command line arguments, then this is the error. Okay. So this nesting of try statements will occur in very less obvious ways whenever the method calls are involved. Okay. So for example, you can enclose a call to a method within a try block, right? Then inside that method, there is another try statement. So in this case, the try statement within the method is still inside the outer try block, which calls the method. So here is the uh, previous program, whatever the program we have uh, done just now. So we have uh, recoded it, recoded it means it has been written, rewritten. So what we are going to turn, what is the changes we have done? Uh, the nested try block is moved inside the method nest try. So we are taking a new method here. Till now in the previous program, we were not having any methods. There was no methods here. But here what we are doing now, we are creating a method and inside that method, we are putting our inner try block. Okay. So let us see now how this could be done. So see here friends. So let us try to understand. Try statements can be implicitly nested via calls to methods. So we are taking the methods now. Okay, so here you can see you have a class with the name met nest try. Then you have a method. See, friends, you have a static void nest try, right? Was, was it available here? Was it available here? Just check. No, it's not available. We have started directly with the main function. But here we are creating a method which is called as what? Nest try. Inside this, we have put one of the try blocks. Right, you can see here, this try block was there, there also, see, it was here also, right, it is here also, but what is the change, it is not inside the main function, it is inside a nest try method, here is it, where it is, where is this second try method, it is inside the main, but where it is here now, it is inside the method nest try, okay, now, let us say we have two arguments passed, Okay, so here if two line command line arguments are passed, then you should generate a out of boundary exception, right? So this whole description has been done, put inside a method. That's what uh, we tried to explain just now. That is this, uh, whatever this second try is there, this whole has been put in a method. What is the name of the method? It is nest try. Okay. Next, we'll go ahead with the normal main thing that is main uh, method or main function. Here we'll be writing the outer try statement right what is the outer try statement this one if there are no command line arguments that statement see here if there are no command line arguments it has come here i hope it's very clear okay so the whatever the output you get here it is same as the previous output just the small change is what now we have divided our try statements into two parts the first part uh, is say you can say we have put it into a method the second part, we have put it in a main function or the main function consists of the uh, first try statement and the inner try statement consists of the, is, is being put in the nest try method. Okay. So I hope this is clear. So any doubts, uh, let me know. You can contact me and ask me. Thank you.